Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Mark Side of the Ring. I'm your host, Miguel Manetti, and today I have one of my co-hosts, Fred Decor. What's going on, buddy? What's going on, Miguel? Great, great to be here again. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. So, uh, conspicuous by his absence, unfortunately, Nick Fiorentino had a scheduling conflict today. Uh, he'll be back to join us next week, but today it's going to be a two-man booth, and uh, I'm ready to talk all things Elimination Chamber, Fred. How about yourself? Oh, yeah. Love the Chamber. We're hot on the road to WrestleMania, so as you guys know, we're uh, exactly what, as of, we're recording Thursday, so we're two days, three days away, 72 yeah. hours from the Chamber pay-per-view on the road to WrestleMania, so today's episode is going to be dedicated to all things our prediction of the upcoming Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. So I'm ready to roll, Fred. Are you ready to go, my friend? Let's do it. All right, sir. So the first match we're going to discuss on the Chamber Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, we're going to start off with the Raw Women's Championship, which we found out may have some tweaks to it now. Uh, it's supposed to be Asuka defending the Raw Women's title against Lacey Evans. But before we get into the match itself, Lacey Evans <laughs> made an announcement on Raw this past Monday when Charlotte was coming and going to come after her. She said, Charlotte, don't touch me or you're not going to touch me. And then paused for a second and said, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I just started laughing. I said, this Woo! is the most ridiculous thing. I love it. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Ric Flair started strutting. He was so excited. But the real story here is she's legitimately pregnant. Right. So, we come to find like 15, 20 minutes later on social media that somebody found out she's actually pregnant. Not with Ric Flair, of course, but her real legitimate husband. So, Fred, um, we can't really predict this match, but what were your thoughts when you first heard that Lacey Evans was legitimately pregnant? I was, I was surprised because, you know, she's in a big storyline right now. And, you know... They have big plans going into WrestleMania, you know, something involving her with Charlotte. They've been obviously building to this for the last month and a half. So I was like, oh, wow, that's I mean, you know, it's a beautiful thing. She's having a baby, but terrible timing storyline wise. Like, why would you do that now? She may not have been planning to do it. I, I don't know, you know, her personal life. But uh, yeah, I was I was surprised, to be honest. I mean, I, I do like that they're making a storyline out of a real thing. And I think there's a lot of fun things you could do with flair being the father so uh it'll turn into something cool i you know as far as storyline but kind of you know gets rid of any plans they had previously as far as her competing against charlotte or anything so so if you remember i know we weren't doing the podcast back then but we we touched on it i believe over the summer at some point we talked about the fact that when becky lynch first got pregnant too right it was a really weird time for wrestling fans because if you really think about it, this is now the first time, right, where mm -hmm. the women's division is as important as it's ever been, right? Because right. you had never really heard of the, you know, quote unquote term, the divas getting pregnant back in the day, because a lot of them were not really ever on TV if they did get pregnant to begin with, or they started to have a family once they were no longer on television or on right. consistently. So now we're starting to see that new trend, right? Becky obviously being the first and now Lacey Evans being the second. And, you know, of course, congratulations to her and her husband and their family. But we're going to start to see a trend shift now where obviously the women's division is full throttle. Um, it's a high point in WWE, right? It's one of the major focuses, which – I'm all for, which is awesome. But, you know, um, it, it sounds like there's going to be some conflict with these female superstars when they think about when to have a family versus when to put their career first. Yeah, it's it's interesting times. I think a lot of it, too, has to do with the fact that back in the day when it was the Divas, their runs weren't long. Sure. You know, they were around for a few years, the most maybe. Um, a women's career really didn't have that much longevity. You know, even if you look at Trish Stratus's career, she probably had one of the best of all time and is regarded as one of the best of all time. But she was only there six years. Mm -hmm. Charlotte, Becky, and Sasha have been on the main roster alone six years this summer, right? right? So, and they're obviously nowhere near at the end of their careers. So I think that's a big part of it, too. Like, they didn't have that long of runs back then, so it wasn't out of the question to 
have a few year little few year run, then you know go on with your life and move on. Um, there just wasn't much longevity with their careers, but now that they're actual superstars, there's a lot more uh, longevity there. So you're going to run into these situations if they do want to have kids. Do you yeah. think that if if any, uh, you know, a majority of them will want to come back after they have families? I mean, right? So Becky's the first one now, and yeah, you're back yet. Do you think? there'll be a thing where a majority of them have families obviously, you know, take time off to heal and nurture their kids. Right. And get everything established. But do you think that we'll start to see them come back after they give birth? I do. I do. I don't know how much full-time capacity we, we will, you know, and these things could be touch and go. Like it's going to be hard because for instance, Becky may be ready to come back and she may be on the road for three months and be like, you know what? I, I can't do this. Yeah. I mean, there are things with contracts and, and stuff like that. So I don't know how much, you know, it could be worked around, but she may want to and then realize she doesn't want to. And maybe she'll work that into like, listen, I don't want to commit to anything full on. But again, WWE, is, you know, you know how they are. They want to know. They want a commitment. That's why for years they wouldn't even hire part timers. Brock was really the first one to have that kind of contract. It was either you're on or, or you're not on at all. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, go ahead. No, so I'm so what I'm saying is I don't know how much they're willing to accept that, you know, because they're investing into a character. Um, you know, I mean, the fact alone that they lost Becky last year, you know, like so, it comes to a point of like where you know it's business but personal at the same time. Like that's a that's a tough thing to real you know to balance um, for the company and for the uh, competitor. I mean, this is unprecedented, not just in WWE, but in wrestling in general. Right. I can't think of any other female superstar before Becky that gave birth or was pregnant in the prime oh. of her career. Right. Can you think Never. of from TNA? Cause TNA, uh, you know, they were credited for inventing the, the knockouts division first. Right. right? I don't think right. they're even was pregnant in the prime of their career. So I don't know when Mickey, it was after her WWE run. Yeah. Um, when Mickey got pregnant, if if she was in TNA at the time, I mean, obviously there was Maurice, but she was just she'd wrestle like twice, but she was of like during that time, right. but she was mostly just a valet with with Miz at the time when she announced she was pregnant with their first child. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say that uh, obviously Becky's the first because, you know, Brie Bella gave right. birth, right? Yeah, but Brie Bella, again, after her run, you know, yeah, Becky's like the first like active competitor, like full time wrestler that um, gave birth during that. Yeah. So, yeah, she, you know, it's definitely an interesting uh, topic to think about, right? And it's certainly mm -hmm. something that, uh, Davey and um, and now AEW right with Brandy Rhodes getting pregnant and yeah um, Renee getting pregnant even though I know Renee is not you know an in ring competitor or even with AEW but you're going to start to see that trend now with right more female superstars and um, it'll be interesting to see how often if at all they return right once they yeah. get here so uh, it'll be interesting to see with Lacey you know obviously we wish her nothing but the best in her pregnancy and I'm you know, very happy for her and her family. yeah. A big congratulations to her and her husband. Absolutely. So why don't we talk about, instead of the prediction, I mean, I, I think no matter who Asuka faces, she's going to win. But who would you say is a viable replacement for Lacey Evans for Sunday? I think there's the old adage that you always have to, you know, have the replacement be better than the person that was going to be in there or, or try to anyway, at least, you know. So I think something that would be really cool uh, would be Rhea Ripley. The idea, you know, she, we know that she debuted on the main roster at the Rumble, but they just haven't had any plans yet for her. So I think it would be pretty cool if Rhea filled in, Rhea won the championship from Asuka, and we get Rhea and Charlotte in a rematch from last year's Mania, but this time for the Raw Women's Championship. Hmm. I would even take I would even take a triple somehow working in a triple threat between Charlotte, Oscar, and Rhea. Wow, you're going a much different direction I was going because my thought was 
Lacey's pal Peyton Royce was going to face her, and Austin oh. was going to do a squash match over her. No, you know? I don't think so. No? I, no, I th- would, if it wasn't WrestleMania time, maybe. But I think, um, no, I think we're going to, it's going to build us something for Mania. All right, so for those of you keeping score at home, Fred's official pick is going to be a Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley. In a title change, and I'm going with the safe route. I'm going Oscar to retain. I'm so, thinking. I'm thinking it's going to be Peyton Royce. You went crazy with the Rumble. Now you're like, all right, I'm going to pull it back a little bit because that's right. I got to be a little more conservative. So. Whereas I was pretty. I went with the you know the concrete at the Rumble, and now I'm you know going a little out there for this one. That's right. That's right. So it'll be interesting to see though that if. Uh, you know, if, if they kind of replace her up with someone like Rhea Ripley or maybe, you know, Black yeah, Lady. I mean, the, my thing is, you know, it would be a, it would be a nice little jolt to the Raw Women's um, division. So. SmackDown, listen, we know it's going to be Bianca and Sasha as it should be. Right. I love how they're teasing it. Um, so we know we have that. So the Raw Women's Championship is going to need something. And you have big players. I mean, Charlotte's a big player. Oscar's a big player. So they deserve something big. And if you put throw Rhea Ripley in the mix there, especially with what's happening with Lacey, they need something else now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see for sure. Uh, Let's move on to our next match, which is the uh, triple threat match for the United States championship. We have Bobby Lashley, who's the current United States champion versus Keith Lee versus uh, Riddle. This Mm -hmm. match is going to be fantastic. I'm very much looking forward to this. What do you, what are your thoughts on this match? I'm excited, but let's hope it happens. Okay, so tell, tell why. Yeah, because th- there is talk that Keith Lee, who wasn't on Raw Monday, um, may not be in it. Now, we didn't know what the situation was. He had been gone for a couple of weeks because Mia Yim uh, had COVID. So, as a, you know, he that's why he missed the Rumble and things. Like that. But then he was back on Raw, uh, I guess it was last week. Right, last week. I think he was on, yeah, he was on Raw the but he wasn't on this Monday, and everybody's like, oh, that's weird. So I thought to think, oh, maybe he has COVID or something. But then a story came out today that Vince McMahon is just not set on him yet uh, and that he's, he's not sure about his push. So his appearance is in question. Now, they haven't announced anything from WWE that, like, he's not going to be there. But there is a chance that he's not. Now, I... Even if Vince isn't set on his push, okay, fine. Doesn't mean he shouldn't be in the match. I would keep him in the match. You just don't have him win if you don't want him to win. I mean, not that I agree with that either, but I'm saying there's no reason to pull him from it because you're unsure about his push. Yeah, I I definitely think he should be in the match. But now an interesting topic that I'm thinking of off the top of my head is, do you think that Vince is more likely to change matches because of the Thunderdome, because there's no live audience there? Yeah, yeah. I think so, because I, I, I feel like there is no, I mean, you have people buying the network, but there's no paying customer, right? Like buying a ticket. So you're not going to have people outraged about things and requesting ticket refunds, you know, because there are no tickets, right? So, and there is always card subjects to change, you know, which is a great loophole. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I, and, I, you know, <sighs> I wouldn't advertise it if he's not going to be there. I mean, but it wouldn't be the first time WWE has done that. Sure, sure. Right? So, but as far as prediction, if saying Keith Keith Lee is in the match, uh, you know, it's hard because I can't see Bobby losing. I really can't. But yet, I, uh, I, at the same time, I see Riddle winning it and Bobby moving on to something else. What that something else is, I I don't know. Um, But... I'm going to go with Riddle on this one. I'm going to take a chance and say Riddle. I, I, I like Riddle, too. That's my pick. Um, I think Riddle is going to be the breakout star of this year. I think I put yeah. that. We have a group chat uh, for a bunch of wrestling fans. and uh, Marks. We're all, a bunch of Marks like us. Exactly. We're all friends in real life. And uh, I, I put on Raw on Monday when we were talking about rest, Raw, what was happening. I said, right. I believe Riddle is going to be the breakout star of this year. I think he's just improved so much from mm-hmm. a – character development right and i always thought his mic skills were great his in-ring activity looked great looked solid in the ring but i think WWE finally is putting the brass behind him right to say hey i think this is this guy's year so i have no yeah. doubt that riddle uh is going to be a big time player this year and i think it starts on sunday with him winning the united states championship 
No, I see that too. I think uh, I think the future is bright for Riddle. I love his backstage segments. You know, they're they're so silly and stupid, but that's why I love them, and that's what makes him different than everybody else. You know, I'm just waiting for the day we get a Riddle RVD backstage segment. Oh yeah, that would be huge. That would be phenomenal. But one day, that 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 would be fantastic. Do you think that it's implied that he's stoned, for lack of a better word? I think so. Okay. I, I I think so. I think that that, you know, it's a little more subtle than the way RVD used to say things, yeah. you know, and promote things, but different times. Uh, but yeah, I think I think so for sure. Um, if Lashley does lose, do you have a prediction where you think he's heading as we go down the road to WrestleMania? It's hard. You know, it's hard. I um, There's really no other competitor on Raw to have him in a big match, at least on, a, on the babyface side. Um, you know... He could have faced Drew, but I don't. I don't think that's where they're they're going. I mean, they had the match. I forget when they had their match. I want to say it was uh, Extreme Rules. I think it was either Extreme Rules or Backlash that they had the t- the title match, and it was good. And that was when Bobby really started to come into his own. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I of course I want the Brock. Bobby Lashley match, but I don't think this is the time for it. Um, do you think we ever do get that match, though? Because I'm really hoping that we do. There's a lot of things that that, you know, depends on, but if, if Brock comes back, I can't see how we can't get that match and why you wouldn't. I think that's just leaving money on the table. I think, you know, how many more big matches does Brock have, like, against guys that he hasn't already had feuds with? Not that many. I mean, there there's a, a, a few, and, you know, depending on how many young guys come up that, you know, become, you know, valuable players. But he's gone through everybody pretty much. So I think him and Lashley, it's something people want to see. It's something new. Why not do it? Lashley obviously wants it. He's going on Twitter every day talking about having that match. So I don't know how Lesnar feels about it, but and that's obviously going to be – you know who else wants a, a match with Lesnar? Is oh, that ain't going to happen. Riddle and Lesnar would be a legit. Yeah, Lesnar, ain't, it, that ain't going to Not now. I don't know. Uh, I think Lesnar. Same thing with Riddle, Riddle and Goldberg, you know? Riddle wants Goldberg in a match. He wants them all. He wants, he, he wants to smoke, literally. He does. He does want to smoke, right? Uh, I, I think that's good for Riddle's career. I know he probably pisses a lot of people off. Yeah, nearly those two. But I mean, the man's trying to make a name for himself. And I believe he truly thinks he believes on what he's saying. Yeah, I give him credit. He and he he doesn't bitch out like he like you watch that backstage um, thing. I don't know if it was the day of the Rumble from last year. Yeah. Or what show it was. It was something. And him and Goldberg ran in the day of the Rumble. Yeah. Right. And he didn't back away from him at all. Yeah. Like some guys, some guys, you know, you say you talk all this shit and then he comes to you and you, hey, man, I don't want no trouble. Let's, you know, Riddle, he didn't back away. I said, you know, and I think I think it was a shoe last year. And we're talking. About, I do, for, too. For those of you that don't know, we're talking about the uh, the WWE Network show the day of the Royal Rumble 2020 last year's Royal Rumble. There's a segment with Matt Riddle uh, walking around backstage and he runs right into Goldberg, and and I truly don't think it was planned. But Goldberg's just kind of uh, looking him up and down. I am up and down, and Rails just you know giving that you know goofy smile that he gives. He's like, "What's up, bro?" You know, like he's trying to make it casual, but yeah. Goldberg wasn't having it. He looked pretty pissed off. But um, I, I I give Riddle a lot of credit for for both of his feuds, his his online things that he says about Goldberg and Lesnar. I know. Um, because I think he's trying to promote himself. And in this day and age with social media and with so many du- uh, different WWE and AEW, right, and Impact, mm-hmm. so many different shows that are out there, I think social media is, is, should be your best friend if you're a performer right now. So, oh, 100%. That's, he, that's your, your biggest tool, honestly. Yeah. And, he, and he maximizes that. He does, a, he does a nice job of putting his brand out there for when he doesn't get airtime on, on Raw every week. 
week. So Mm -hmm. I definitely give him a lot of credit for that. But yeah, to get back to the match, I think uh, I I think this would be a good stepping stone for Riddle to become United States champion, head into WrestleMania as the champion. And I mean, I don't know. There's so many different opponents he could probably face. What's cool about someone like Riddle is. First and foremost, he hasn't faced a lot of the roster yet, right? So it's not like matches that we've seen before. But the other thing, too, is I think he has a unique look to him where he can match up nicely against uh, bigger guys and smaller guys. It doesn't matter which size, right? So, like, him and Rey Mysterio, I would be excited for just as much as him and Brock Lesnar, right, or him and Braun Strowman because it's fresh, right? We haven't seen a lot of Riddle. And, and and that's hopefully to to Vince's credit that Riddle hasn't been super overexposed at this point yet. So, you know. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, Riddle, Riddle has done a great job so far. He's had a great run since he debuted. I think it was sometime over the summer uh, yeah. on the main roster. But the sky's the limit for him. And, and you know what's another thing, too, that I was thinking about, and, and you just said with Riddle since he debuted, I think it was in like May or June. There's a lot of people, men and women that are now on the main roster that came on the main roster after March 15th or March 17th. Yeah. Whatever the last show with fans were. So we haven't seen a legitimate crowd response to a good number of talent on the um, SmackDown NXT and raw roster. yet. Right. So right. It'll be interesting to see because WrestleMania is obviously going to be, you know, God willing the kickoff to bringing fans back. It'll be interesting to see how much of a pop someone like Riddle gets Keith Lee gets right. Damian priest gets, I mean, mm-hmm. there's just so much, there's so many people now on all three brands, uh, carry and cross on NXT, right? Not one show he's had a fans with yet. Not one. No, he hasn't had, not even an NXT. No. Well, that's right. where he's been, but yeah, no. So there, there, there's, it, it's going to be interesting to see now when fans slowly but surely start coming back. And I'm not talking about the, you know, the 50 fans that are in the NXT crowd every week right now, which is cool. It's a nice concept, but mm-hmm. I'm talking like thousands of fans being in attendance there just to see what type of pop that these superstars, men and female get, male and female get. So right, right. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. But let's move on now to our next match, and we're gonna go with the um, we're gonna go with the, the WWE Championship match first for inside the Elimination Chamber. So we have Drew McIntyre who has to defend his WWE Championship against Jeff Hardy, Randy Orton, AJ Styles, Kofi Kingston, and Sheamus. And they announced on Monday because Sheamus won. Uh, the gauntlet match, the so Sheamus actually gets to be the last entrant in the uh, chamber match itself. So, mm-hmm. um, Fred, tell me your thoughts on this match in particular. And uh, I, I think I know your prediction, but you can go ahead and end it off with your prediction as well, too. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I like it. You got a great group of talent in the in the chamber. Um, a few of the guys have had experience in it. Um, in fact, they all may have, actually. Um I, I like the way that some people were for it. Some people were against it. Miz dis- declaring that he wasn't going to be in it because he had no reason to be. Some people say, oh, it's stupid that you have, you know, another chance to, you know, why, but why put your body through such a grueling match when you have this money in the bank briefcase, you can cash in on the champion right after the chamber. Right. So I liked it. I thought it was something different. And then I liked the whole thing about Kofi getting in it. So now you have that, Kofi Mania 2 question in the air, which I don't think will happen, but I like the idea of it. Um, and then you have the whole Seamus Drew story, which I, is the main story of that match is, you know, Seamus and Drew, which I think will lead to one on one at Mania. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I'm a big Jeff Hardy fan, so I'm happy he's in there. You know, he'll do a swanton off the top of the pod and. So I, w- I want to get back to your uh, to your thoughts of the match itself, but I remember you came on here, it was probably three or four weeks ago now, and said that Drew McIntyre and Sheamus was your match for WrestleMania. Are you still sticking with that? You still think that's going to be the WWE Championship match? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. I still, I'm still going with that. That's, uh, right. I think on the Raw side, that's 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 your biggest match. If Brock doesn't come back, and they do Brock and Drew at Mania, I mean. Sheamus and um, Drew is is the biggest thing they have. They have an actual real story um, that they're slowly building. 
So I think uh, it makes the most sense. And I think they're going to, I mean, Sheamus is really, they've been building him up for a while, going back to his run on SmackDown. He had a few with Big E and, and Jeff Hardy. And so they've been building up. And then when he came over to Raw, uh, but now I think we're real, as we saw with the gauntlet match, I don't think he's going to win the chamber. I think Drew's, that's my prediction. Drew's going to retain the title. Um, but I think, especially with him being the last to enter, I think it's going to come down to him and Drew. Um, and I mean, who knows? They could pull a shocker, you know, and, and Sheamus wins and then Drew gets a rematch. Who knows? I don't know. The problem is we still have fast lane in between. So that really throws a wrench in everything because you really don't have a clear path yet sure. um, to Mania. But, yeah, I think um, not not barring, you know, Brock coming back somehow and him and Drew having a match. I definitely think it'll be Drew and Sheamus one on one because that's the thing that they keep both talking about the the one on one match the one on one match. So, you know I what's think- interesting in, in in the WWE Championship side of things on Raw is the is where Miz falls into all of this, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, yeah. The reason I say that is because the Miz, you know, they obviously uh, had the whole thing with that the bell never rang, right? He got his briefcase back, but right. To go as far as what they did with that storyline to giving the briefcase back to Miz, you have to think that they're not going to treat it as a joke, right? Which means when Miz cashes in, I'm not saying he's going to necessarily get a, a second WWE championship under his reign, but it's it's definitely going to be a close contest when if and when mm-hmm. he cashes in, right? So my question is, where does Miz come into play with WrestleMania coming up, right? Could we see the Miz do more of the honorable thing and say, you know what, I'm cashing in for a match at WrestleMania in the main event or, you know, whatever, one of the main events. Do you think that's the route they go or does does Miz play more of the chicken shit heel and, and cash in when Drew's down? Yeah, I think that's that's more Miz's style. It fits his character to a T to do that. Um, you know, it's hard. Uh, I think they should play it up to mania so that you have that question is will will Miz cash in at wrestlemania you know i i would have him come on tv every week saying he's gonna cash in at wrestlemania he's gonna cash in at wrestlemania he's gonna care like keep saying it so then you have that question mark going into mania and again it doesn't mean he, he's gonna cash in successfully uh, although it is the 10-year anniversary of him beating John Cena in the main event of WrestleMania 27. That's right. So, uh, but, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I like the idea of him being involved. Um, no matter how big or small the role, it's, it's, it's a part of the show that's, you know, intriguing. Now, there was the rumor that it was going to be him and Morrison versus Priest and Bad Bunny in the... Uh, tag match which definitely seemed like the route at the rumble on the night after but i didn't get that feel after i mean they could always go back to it but like this monday they didn't really do anything towards that um bad bunny won the 24 7 title which i loved i thought that was great but nothing with miz and um morrison so i don't know if that's not going to happen anymore i'm not sure um but that was a rumor at one at one point a couple weeks ago yeah, it, it could be a tag match with Priest and Bad Bunny at WrestleMania, but maybe taking on somebody else. So uh, we'll, we'll have to see there. But what's interesting is, you know, with, with Miz, could he potentially cash in on Sunday after the Chamber match is over? Because if you remember, the first ever cash in took place yeah. right after a Chamber match, right? With Edge yep. cashing in on John Cena. So Yeah, a lot yeah of one fun. of the best of all time. Um yeah, the, I mean, it was the first cash in, which, you know, makes it the best. But it, it really, I mean, was one of the best of all time. Um, so he could. Uh, well, that would really, you know, that would throw things off going into mania. Because now that that's a whole him going into mania as champion is a whole different, you know, ball of wax. So but. Never say never. Especially this year, right? I mean, I feel like yeah. if there's going to be a mania they're going to experiment with, I think it's this one, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're only going to have a limited crowd, 
people, you and I, we're going to WrestleMania, hell or high water. We're going, I don't care what the main event is or what right. any event is, we're going to WrestleMania. I think that there could be no matches. If there's zero matches, we're going to WrestleMania. We're I'm just going to sit there, there and just we'll, stare we'll, at the ring. We'll look at each other at Raymond James Stadium, right? We'll yeah. look at the pirate ship the whole time. <laughs> but I, th- I think all jokes aside, I think that's every fan's response and mentality this year is I'm going, I don't care what the hell it is, right? Yeah, you know, and that kind of takes me back to last year when the pandemic first hit and like them doing all that experimental, like, you know, um, cinematic stuff. Mm-hmm. Now was the time to do it, you know, so and maybe not cinematic stuff, but yeah, different storylines, you know, trying different people. Now is the time to do it still. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be the worst idea they've ever had. You're going to have people that are going to be pissed, but you're going to have people that are pissed no matter what. But I, it would it would change things up, and it would be a shocking um, moment. I, I do want Drew, for Drew's sake, to, you know, keep the title. But either way, I think Drew's walking out of Mania as the champion, whether he loses it prior or he doesn't, you know. I don't think he, I don't think he should lose it then. Um, no, I I don't either. You know, he lost it the one time against Orton. Yeah, and got it back like what two weeks later, I think. Which, on Raw. I think honestly, looking back, it it didn't do anything for Orton's career or Drew's career. I, I think I, I don't know if that was a mistake on yeah. his mind, but it was really weird for him to lose it for three weeks, right? Maybe I know. I don't know why they did that. The only the most shocking part was Orton winning at Hell in a Cell because I really didn't I thought Drew yeah. was hanging on to it. That was the only thing. And then I so I mean I was shocked when Drew won it back on Raw because they hadn't done a change a title change on Raw in a long time or championship WWE right. champ you know. So so that was shocking too, but um yeah looking back I, I really don't know why they did it. I mean it really didn't affect anything one way or the other. It was kind of just like they did it to do it kind of thing. I think maybe to pop a rating for a couple of weeks and, and that was it. So may, and maybe that was it that was, you know, we, as wrestling fans, we, we always think that everything has this long, like this big elaborate plan. There's like this master plan for everything. And usually that ain't the case. It's like, we're just trying to get from one week to the next. That's right. That's you right. know, so it's easy for us to be uh, Monday morning quarterback. So, mm-hmm. Shouldn't give him too much help for that. But let's move on now to the uh, SmackDown side of things. And this is going to be a two-parter here. So they announced, Roman Reigns announced that the winner of the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match would not only be for the number one contendership for the Universal title, but it's also going to take place on that same night. So in the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match, which is, again, for the number one contendership for the Universal title, we have Kevin Owens versus Daniel Bryan versus Cesaro versus Jey Uso versus Sami Zayn versus King Corbin. So Mm -hmm. six guys in that chamber all vying to become number one contenders to take on Roman Reigns later that night. If, if my memory serves me right, only Daniel Bryan and Jay Uso have been in the chamber, but maybe I'm wrong. Have more guys been in the chamber before besides those two? Uh, wait, you said Jay Uso and who? And Daniel Bryan. Has anyone? Daniel Bryan. Um, Cesaro was in one. Okay, Cesaro. Cesaro was in, uh, they had a tag team championship one back at the Elimination Chamber of 2015. It's okay. like a network special when they first they had it and had it in, in a and year. And now I'm thinking Kevin Owens has probably been in one too. Um, ye- there's been so many, honestly. I'm right sure. now, it's I used to know every chamber who was in every. I used to know all that, but now it's just gotten to the point where I, I don't. Um, I remember some of them. I yeah. could tell you ones years ago who was in them, but ne- like you asked me who was in two years ago, I'll be like, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I. I I can't tell you for certain one way or the other that Kevin Owens was or wasn't in it. I'd be surprised to say he wasn't in it in, um, well, let's see. They, they brought it back in 2015 at the network special. He faced Cena at that show. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was his, that was their first match. That's um, right. Yeah, I remember. Right. And then, then they didn't do it in 16. They brought it back as a pay-per-view in 17 with the new structure yeah, now, that was a SmackDown show. Kevin Owens was on Raw at the time. He was actually the champion at that time. That's he would lose, it a, he would lose it a couple weeks later to to Goldberg. Goldberg that's right. Yeah. yeah, right. 
Uh, so then 2018, uh, it was a Raw event, but Kevin Owens was on SmackDown at the time. Okay, so he missed that one. So he missed that one. And then in 2019, uh, it was at that point they were dual brand pay reviews. But um, I don't think because I know he was off the Mania card that year in New Jersey, and that was like a bit. He had been out with an injury, and he had come back like not long prior to Mania, right? And then wasn't on Mania, and it was like, wait, why wouldn't Kevin Owens is back? Why wouldn't you have him? But anyway, so he, I don't think he was on nineteen, and then. Uh, I know for a fact he wasn't uh, on last year's. So I actually, but he he did come out because uh, I just watched it. Uh, we were there. Uh, Seth Rollins and uh, Buddy Murphy defended the tag titles again, or they went for the tag titles against the Street Profits. And Kevin Owens was feuding with him at the time, and so he made an appearance. Right. He like interfered last year, but anyway. So no, after that whole diatribe, I don't think Kevin Owens has ever been in Elimination Chamber. Well, there you have it, right? <laughs> so we, we 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 broke it down. That's what we do for our our loyal audience for, here. For our Mark's loyal audience. listeners here, we break down who's been in chamber matches and who hasn't. So, all right, let's get into the match itself. So, uh, what do you what are you expecting for from this match? Is are you excited for it? And who do you think is going to become the number one contender? So, I'm very excited for it. But we let's let's not forget the point of why this is happening the way it is. It's and which is half the reason why I love it. Roman Reigns was told he was going to defend the title in the chamber. And he said, no, he's not. That's right. So that's a huge part of it. I love that. I love that Roman said, I'm not, I'm not defending my title in the elimination chamber. Are you crazy? That's right. Yeah. He'll defend it against the person that wins it, who we know is, has gone through hell. They've gone through the chamber. I'll yeah. defend it against them after. I mean, that's it's such a shitty heel move. It's fantastic. So, now, to get to my point, uh, I think, you know, they're pushing Cesaro. That's like the big talk of the town, which I love. I don't see him winning it, though. Um, obviously, Kevin Owens makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. So I think they're going to go with, with Kevin Owens. Uh, I would have said Daniel Bryan because now it doesn't look like we're going to do Daniel Bryan and Roman at Mania like it was rumored, because it looks like that'll be Edge. So I would have said, okay, well, they'll do Bryan and Roman now. Um, but with the way they're obviously continuing the, the Kevin Owens thing, I think the logical answer is Kevin Owens, and they do Kevin and, and Roman um, right after. So I, I, I mean, I don't see Roman losing the title. No at all no matter who it is yeah. uh you know even to i don't even see him losing it and winning it back at fast lane i i, I don't even see that I'll, I'll honestly i wouldn't even put roman on fast lane okay. i would do a whole thing where he refuses to work that show he's like we're three weeks from the biggest show of the year i'm not putting my title on the line yeah i could I, you know do something like that i you know fast lane first off shouldn't even be a fucking pay-per-view I, I don't even want to get started on that but <laughs> uh you know, um, yeah, so I'm going Kevin Owens, but Roman Roman ain't losing that belt. Yeah. Not even at WrestleMania. Well, so if we did process of elimination, Sami Zayn and King Corbin don't make any sense, right? They're no, both, they're not winning. Not going to happen. Uso could make sense because it's his cousin, but we've seen that already, right? But this, right. Time, this time, Uso is aligned with him. So if Uso does somehow sneak a victory... I think they could do what I predicted would happen back in September, and he just lays down for Roman, right? Yeah. He was so exhausted, and is like, you know what? F it. I'm just going to lay down. You're you're the tribal chief. I've already made peace with that and Roman, which I think would be really, really cool to happen. I'm still waiting for that. Yeah. Um, Cesaro, you know, they're definitely pushing this guy to the moon recently, which is awesome to see. I mean, To nobody, the moon! Nobody deserves it more than Cesaro, but I just don't see him winning which leaves us daniel bryan and kevin owens we've seen mm -hmm. kevin owens and, and roman reigns multiple times now which i'm a, i'm all for seeing them one more time i mean they have some yeah. great chemistry together but i think daniel bryan is the x factor here right because we've never seen well not never but we haven't seen that match daniel bryan versus roman reigns in a very very long time and especially with roman's current character right they've mm -hmm. they've done a nice job of separating daniel bryan anywhere near a roman reigns storyline for the last six, seven months now, which is really cool to see. So I'm going to go Daniel Bryan as the winner here. Right. But then unfortunately, well, you know, he'll, he'll take an L 
to Roman Reigns because there's just no way. I mean, all signs point to Edge Roman at WrestleMania, which I'm so pumped to see. I've been dying to see that match for years. Um, there's just no way that Roman Reigns goes into WrestleMania without that Universal Title at this point. So, no, I don't. I don't think so either. I really don't. I that would just that wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, it, it wouldn't make any sense. And you know, I liked your point about Fastlane before. Fastlane this year reminds me of the Chamber that you and I went to last year, where it, it took place two weeks after a other pay per view. If you remember last year, right? And we actually went to the Chamber, him, uh, Fred, and I. It took place right after the the Saudi Arabia pay per view, whatever one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Crown Jewel, right? Crown yeah, Jewel. Uh, Super Showdown. Uh, Super Showdown. He was one of those two. Yeah, so yeah Super that's the Showdown. Only and then what? Two weeks later, we had the Chamber match. Yeah, the pay per view, and that pay per view had neither world champion on the show. It didn't have Drew McIntyre, which who was the uh, Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not, it didn't have Brock Lesnar, which was the uh, WWE champion. Right. And it didn't have Roman Reigns, who was the uh, Universal yeah. champion, right? If I'm getting my, my memory straight. Right. Yeah, no, you're, uh, no uh, Goldberg was the Universal Sorry, Goldberg, champion. yeah. Wait, so mean, it didn't, yeah, it didn't have, it didn't have the have champions anybody. or the contenders. It didn't have any, right? It didn't have any of the four on it. That's right. No. Any of the four on it. So. You know, I mean, I'm not expecting to see Goldberg and Brock. Don't get me wrong. I mean, obviously. But not even, I mean, I guess they figure what the hell they're going to do. Like I said, I just watched last year's, and they did show um, what had happened the Raw prior between Brock and um, and Drew. So they, you know, they did that that night in in Brooklyn, uh, which I was there right. for when he claimed more than like three or four times. Yep, that's right. And uh, so, like, they showed that, and like, then they showed the graphic for the match. It was actually very depressing to watch last year's Elimination Chamber. Um, on one hand, it was cool. You know, it was the last show, like second to last live show, the last show we've been to. Uh, but all that build up for Mania, because you know now we're so close, everything was all about it. It was a little depressing to watch, knowing what was going to happen. But that week, actually, like you know, I remember, uh, I remember that day, right? We had, you know, we, we went with our other friend Drusino, and um, and I think my brother came too, and we already mm -hmm. had started talking about. COVID, right? And mm -hmm. they were talking about how like things were going to maybe start shutting down. And I was like, makes no sense. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah. But now looking back, I'm like, wow, we were at an arena with 20,000 people. Right. I mean, we, <laughs> at, we, at the height of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no really any better, right? So no, I wish we didn't know any better enough for another month, but that's an easy that's right. That's right. I wish we didn't know any better until May, but. Hindsight's twenty twenty on that. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's interesting to see that we're, we've come almost full circle here, right? Next month yeah. will be a full year from the last uh, live pay-per-view with fans, I'll say. And, and now we're, we're talking about the Elimination Chamber of 2021. The good news, though, is that this Elimination Chamber pay-per-view seems to be uh, uh, going to be a much better show than last year. I didn't think last year's was particularly a great show, but looking no. back now, it, it'll always hold a special place probably in our hearts, right? It will. It really will. I mean, it would. It will always be a special, even if you start going back to shows, that will always be a special show. I'll, I'll never forget that that chamber, you know? That's right. So do you think, um, let, let's talk about some other quick hits for the pay-per-view itself. Yeah. Do you think uh, Edge makes an appearance on Sunday? What would you do if you were booking him? Um, I think that would be a nice little finish to the pay-per-view and really amp up the road to Mania where Roman wins you know, beats whoever and yeah. that's the close of the show and Roman and then edge comes out, stares down Roman or he could even like, or maybe he'll spear Roman at, maybe he'll come out of nowhere and spear Roman. Yeah. After Roman, you know, wins. And then that's how we know, but I would like to see some, they could save it for SmackDown and I wouldn't be mad at that. I mean, that's where edge finally declares, but I think it would be pretty sharp to go off of air um, with one way or another, you knowing, Oh shit. Okay. It's, it's edge and Roman at mania. Um, I just think that would be a nice, you know, would, really you, get have it going. Edge, would you have edge do uh, a match before mania, maybe at fast lane, like a warm up or no, no, he could warm up at the performance center. I don't want to see edge in a ring. Before. I was surprised he did that, raw. He even, that he even worked out raw. I mean, that was cool. That he worked a raw. I mean, it's not like raw with fans, but still, like he worked a raw. Like that was cool. I, I didn't expect him to to ever. Yeah, looking work a raw. back, looking back, 
I always feel like the Raw, the night after Royal Rumble, is is cool in the sense that, you know, people that make their return at the Rumble, they usually wrestle the next night on, on Raw, too. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, you know, it happened with our guest from last week, Carlito. He wrestled right. on Raw the night after. Uh, MVP did it last year. You know, guys are in town. Uh, so, it's yeah, it's... Stay over, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> So I want to talk about one final thing uh, before we close the show. And mm-hmm. that's actually not anything to do with WWE, but instead AEW, as we come up to their next pay-per-view called Revolution, um, Kenny Omega is going to be defending the AEW championship against John Moxley. And we just found out that the match is going to be a barbed wire, no, exploding barbed wire death match. So... Fred, I know you're the ultimate AEW, Mark, and I say that with a lot of sarcasm. What are your thoughts on an exploding death or barbed wire death match? I don't even know if I said that right. Well, first off, I I find it interesting that it's for the AEW championship because I thought Kenny Omega was the WWE champion. Oh, that's right. (laughs) That's what JR said last night. I don't don't know. I just wasn't sure. That's right. (laughs) Anyway, I love JR. It was just a funny, you know. But um, boy, oh boy, you know there's gratuity for gratuity's sake sometimes, and I just feel like they're being gratuitous just because they feel like they can be because they're not WWE. Um, because they know WWE would never do that, right? So they're like, we're gonna be cool and different and do that, which I get. Be different, you know. Uh, I have to, I'll have to see it to really ju- like, sometimes you build things up so big and then it's like, oh, that's it. So unless somebody's really getting exploded on the show in the match, then it didn't live up to the hype. Do you think we're going to get, do you think we're going to see a lot of gore in that match? Right. They have to. Blood. I mean, listen, they've done C4 explosive stuff for years in Japan. I mean, Foley, you know, the king of the death matches. Foley's iconic from doing those. Yeah. So it wouldn't be the first time that somebody's fallen on exploding, you know, barbed wire boards, uh, plywood with C4 explosives attached to it. But do would I do that in 2021? No. Well, that, that was going to be my follow-up, right? Is are, are we maybe in a different world now where it just feels almost weird yeah, we're taking two steps back. It's like if we saw a bra and panties match. Like, it would just not, like, I'm not going to complain, but it would be like, what the fuck are they doing? Why would they do that? Whereas 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we would, it was commonplace. Exactly. Same things with chair shots at the head. Now it's like, it took a few years to get over that. Like, for after they banned the steel chair shots at the head, I was like, come on. Like, I would, I would, you know, be dying to see one. I remember Taker and Triple H did one at WrestleMania 27 in their match, and they got fined ten thousand dollars or something, which they probably didn't. But that yeah. was what they put on WWE.com in like a legit article, whatever. Right. But now it's like I don't want to see that anymore. I even when I watch old footage, like some of them, I'm like ooh, I cringe, dude. I'm just yeah, crazy. it's I like it, it looks. Cringe. Yeah, it's almost tacky. Yeah, it almost looks like sleazy and tacky like and that's how i feel like this match is going to be but it's aew so it's supposed to be sleazy and tacky well we know where uh fred's allegiance lies when it comes to no nah, i you know what i kid i wish him the best of luck it, listen the better the better they are the better WWE is going to be um so i have no ill will towards them i mean i'm a big fan of john moxley kenny omega to me I, he he's cool but until I don't care what anybody says. Until you were in WWE, you're not nearly the star that you, you know you could be. That, that's just facts. AJ Styles, as big as he was, he didn't become a star like he is now until he went to WWE. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't care what anybody says. Until you have a run in WWE, you'll never be as big as you could have been. They said it about Sting, as big as he was. Once he finally did that WWE match, it's like, okay, now he cemented himself. <laughs> and I, I mean, granted... Well, you are happy that he lost, but he should have won that match. But, um, you know, it was like he was the one guy that never went to WWE. I mean, even though his WWE run wasn't what it could have been, uh, 
he still did it. So right. I just Kenny Omega twenty years from now will not be on a Mount Rushmore because he wasn't a, a WWE superstar. Bold, bold statement from Fred. Wait, one last thought, and you just said about Sting. Did you see the power bomb that he took from Brian Cage? I, I was shocked that he took a bump like that. Right, and that's the other more gratuitous. Like the man, WWE wouldn't let him work anymore because of what happened to him in his match against Seth Rollins. He has spinal stenosis. He wasn't cleared by WWE doctors, but then AEW, he's magically cleared. That doesn't mean it it can't happen. Look, it happened with Edge, mm -hmm. right? Um, it happened with Christian. Different situation, yeah. you know. With Christian, his was concussion based. Seems so like it's not to say that he couldn't get cleared, but like obviously Sting didn't get cleared yet, or otherwise WWE would have let him work. But so I don't know. I mean, unless uh, Sting's doctors cleared him or the AEW doctor cleared him but i just think they're taking a big chance yeah it'll be uh it'll be interesting to see are you, are you planning on uh checking out that pay-per-view at least those two matches no <laughs> all right we'll give you i'll give you the results on how we go after okay. so, <laughs> oh man well we know uh we know fred's allegiance to Davey will lie forever uh can't lie my, myself included uh mm -hmm. i certainly check out AEW weekly but for Whatever reason, we won't go into reasons why. I just I, I prefer the WWE. I've always been that way. So, uh, but not to say I don't like AEW. So I, I I am looking forward. I will be watching their Revolution pay per view. But that's all the time we have for tonight, guys. But before we go, a couple things. First and foremost, as always, you can catch the show. Make sure you follow us on all platforms on True Exact Radio. That's Instagram, Twitter. You can find us on YouTube at True Exact Radio. You can find us at our website now, True Exact radio.com where you can see archived every single mark side of the ring episode alongside some of our other shows that we have on that platform sharp bets and fantasy sets the random university and of course true exact's own show true the true exact show itself so plenty of content on there for you guys to check out um you can also watch our shows of course weekly on youtube spotify itunes soundcloud um the podcast app on iphones as well to anywhere that you find any streaming service for podcasts itself. So make sure to give us a, a, a shout. Make sure to leave some comments and some reviews if you like the show, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. And the big announcement that we have for you before we go is next week, the king of podcasts, the podfather himself, Conrad Thompson, is going to be joining us on Mark's Side of the Ring. Fred, how excited are you to see Connie come on the show? With him? Oh, Connie, my boy. I am beyond <laughs> excited. I'm a huge fan of his work. I've been listening to his uh, podcast since the beginning, something to wrestle with. I listen to all of them. Uh, Grilling JR, now the Kurt Angle Show, the Arn Anderson Show. I mean, just great stuff. Um, so it's an honor that we're going to have him uh, on our show. Absolutely. And it'll be the other way around. So I'm Absolutely. very excited. We're so excited for Con for Conrad to join us next week. And that'll drop uh, a week from Saturday, which will be, I believe, what, the 27th is the date? 27th, yes. 27th, yep. So that'll drop Saturday morning for all you listeners. Uh, so make sure you tune in next week for Conrad Thompson to join the show. So, Fred, thanks so much for chopping it up, all things Elimination Chamber. And uh, I look forward to getting Nick back next week and our special guest, Conrad Thompson. So I'll see you next week, buddy. Take care, man. See Take you there. Care.